Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Nerding Out with Nick Bodiford. My name is Nick Bodiford. The date is October 7th, 2022. Sorry, the time is 7 a.m. my time. Uh, we have, I have a packed day. So we're going to make this a packed episode because there's no other way to do that. One must strive for parody in life. <clears throat> we're hot off the, uh, clunker of a thursday night football game something's wrong in denver i think it's really difficult to to know what uh astute listeners might recall last year that i discussed uh, a physical therapist of mine uh and his take or his colleagues take on russell wilson's mallet finger and how that was going to alter the manner with which russ could grip the ball uh, for the rest of his life it's it's you know he's working basically with a new finger um, and I do think that that might be a factor here. There, there seems to be some decision making that's you know not firing a hundred percent here. Where uh, I'm sure you've all seen by now the images last night of KJ Hamler running free on, on the right side of the field when they were up on the goal line, and you know Russ tried to force the ball to Sutton. I do get the going to your guy, but what was strange was it seemed like the play design, like the first read was Hamler, and he just didn't even look there. So I don't know if that's like familiarity or I, I, I we don't we can't know what the deal is there, um, but it it seems to be like it's more than just the finger. I do think that Hackett is, you know, he 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 has to learn a lot this year because he has been outmatched in just in terms of like clock management which i know some head coaches even like andy reed struggle with but uh hackett just seems like he may have ridden lefleur's coattails and and just you know got this job off of of name alone anyway um for Cortland sutton's outlook it, it sure is nice that he's the guy that russ is trying to to force the ball to like we'll take that uh, I do think that he might have left in overtime to go get a groin injury looked at. I think the broadcast mentioned that. So that's going to be something that we have to monitor. As far as the rest of the Denver Broncos backfield. Um, so Melvin led the way. Melvin Gordon, 15 carries, 54 yards. Mike Boone, 7 carries, 38. And I think Boone also had a good day receiving. Yeah, 3 catches, 47. Oh, and Melvin, uh, 3 catches, 53. It's a split backfield. Melvin has the lead. Nobody fumbled. I don't recall any drops, uh, so I don't know if anything's really going to change there. But they they might try. They they might start getting Boone more involved because because Boone Boone did just look like the better player, which I think he is. Uh, but we'll just have to kind of wait and see. We'll we'll assess what they look like for week three. If Sutton is out, then Judy slides up to like you know mid tier wide receiver two. I wish we could put him higher, but there's clearly issues with the passing game. I think Eric Sauber is a guy to look at in tight end premium and you know in like two tight end leagues because he seems to just be outplaying Albert O at this point. As far as the Colts go, uh Matt Ryan super cooked. Uh and I think I feel like I let you guys down with him. Uh when the signing happened, I was not really into it and was kind of nervous about the passing game. Um, and the, the on, you know, the, the, the NFL discourse online kind of went, well, he's better than once. And I kind of got on board with that bandwagon going, all right, yeah, he's better than once. So that must mean that things will be better. Well, not really. Cause he's terrible and old. So, uh, Pittman, I think we need to readjust and he is probably just a wide receiver two rather than the wide receiver one that I expected him to be. Uh, Alec Pierce looked really good last night, and I think he's worth an add in deep leagues. I actually had uh, Deion Jackson as an RB4 in the nerd ball ranking, so hey, hooray for me. Uh, of course, that may just never have uh, solidified or, or manifested if Naheem Hines didn't get the concussion, uh, But and I hope he heals quickly, but that's kind of the reason why we – it's important in draft season and when injuries occur to just take shots at these – ambiguous backfields and i know Hines was certainly slated to be the the number one and i i mean i i thought that that was pretty much locked in i thought the game script um was going to favor his pass catching skill set denver opened as the favorite it 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 looked like it was going to be a Hines game but we always do need to be on our game and add guys when there's a little bit of ambiguity because the nature of that position just brings uh volume in places that we don't expect it as far as the tight ends, uh, yeah, you can't trust any of them. 
yeah, Kylan Granson is is good. Mo Ali Cox is good. Jelani Woods is good. That's too many good tight ends. N- none of these guys are going to separate. Uh, they're all putting in big time work in the off season. Uh, I think Granson and and Ali Cox went to tight end U. Um, yeah. Anyway, we've talked about that in the past, so we're moving on there. Looking towards Sunday games, uh, New York Giants. I think technically at Green Bay Packers, uh, but they're they're playing in London. So the the points of note from what I've seen, I think Daniel Jones is going to end up playing. I don't know that it really matters because the pass catching core in Green Bay is totally decimated. Um, Kenny Galladay's already been ruled out, as has Kadarius Tony. I guess he strained his other hamstring. I, that stinks to me. I and I know I sound crazy, but I I think something else is is going on there. Wandale Robinson. I guess he's 50-50. Okay, that's cool. Per beat reporters, uh, Richie James. Ankle injury, he got in limited on Thursday. He'll probably play. Uh, but he, the problem is he has to go up against Rasul Douglas, who is probably the best slot corner in the game. So the pass catching core here, I don't want anything to do with for week five. The pass catcher that is relevant, that should be on deep rosters, is tight end Dan Bellinger. I've written him up uh, a couple, couple different places over the last few weeks, but his route participation and his target volume are increasing pretty much on a weekly basis. He had a good profile. He was athletic. He was he was mildly productive, which any kind of production for tight ends in college is, is important. Um, and he, he comes from a scheme where the head coach, Brian Dable, made Dawson Knox look like he might be good. So you should add Dan Bellinger because we're already always looking for something at the tight end position. Saquon Barkley, I think he's pretty much a safe running back one. Moving forward, you can bench stash Brita if you please. Green Bay, I think Rodgers is a a locked-in quarterback one this week. Um, Romeo Dubs is ascending, as I told you he would. Um, And the New York Giants defense is really banged up. They, I think they've had two two front seven guys ruled out. They have uh, one or two cornerbacks that did not travel with the team. I'll pull up the injury report right now. they have their strong safety. Julian Love is uh, – so he's – all right, here we go. Cordell Flott, DMP, DMP. I don't think he traveled. He a uh, rotational cornerback. Strong safety, Julian Love. Concussion, he was DNP, LP Thursday. Henry Mondo, uh, uh, rotational defensive tackle. He didn't practice. I don't Actually, he didn't travel to London. Uh, Aziz Ojolari. Uh, I don't know if he traveled, but he he did too, did not participate it's Wednesday and Thursday. So he a uh, pass rusher. Uh, so he's not playing. Um, Nick McLeod, he limited with a hamstring. Uh, he might play. He, he might not. Fabian Moreau, limited with a foot. Leonard Williams, le- limited with a knee. All those guys, I think that they are genuinely questionable. Williams has been dealing with this for a while. Um, <clears throat> you know, soft tissue with the, with the Nick McLeod thing. Um, the 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 Giants defense is very badly banged up, which means that Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to score some points. And I and I think that moving forward, we can we'll probably be able to to pick on these guys a little bit. I don't think it's particularly a strong unit, uh, but the following week they get Baltimore. You should be adding Devin Duvernay, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But you should you should if Devin Duvernay is available, you need to go add him. Um, as far as the wide receiver core goes, Dubs is the number one. And he, he has been really since week one, uh, or perhaps it was week two. You can go look at my Twitter timeline. I, I do uh, recaps every week for the 33rd team, and Dubs' usage was something I was tracking from the beginning. Uh, actually, I think I talked about this last week, but his targets per out run has always been, I think each week this year has been number one on the team. So Dubs, I, he's a wide receiver too. For me, I, and I know I'm like probably a full 12 spots ahead of consensus there, but he's he is Aaron Rodgers number one, and they're they were scheming him the ball uh, in ways similar to Devontae Adams. So I don't know what more anybody needs. Lazard, I think he's a wide receiver three. I actually I think I have him ranked as like the the wide receiver 37. No, where is he? No, wide receiver 30. Yeah, he he's a wide receiver three here. I think it's a good matchup. I think the volume will be there. And I think that this uh that that Lazard 
has a chance to break out as a fantasy wide receiver three after his career best wide receiver 47 finish. Um, as far as the rest of the guys go, don't worry about Randall Cobb. Uh, he does kind of have a decent matchup against Darnay Holmes, but he's probably only a GPP play, not a redraft play. Christian Watson, just a bench stash. He, he could emerge and he should, but um, we just kind of have to wait and see. Tight ends, don't worry about him. Uh, I mean, Josiah Deguara, yeah, one, one target last week, didn't catch it. The running backs are super interesting here because the, oh, I think I closed that that tab um over unders week five so the giants opened as uh as pretty decent underdogs as i recall i think yeah here we go um so okay so green bay packers open as negative seven and a half home favorites that's a pretty damn big spread um, or, you know, technically uh, uh, home favorites, but whatever, uh, seven and a half point favorites. That's a, that's a big spread. So I think that the running backs, both A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones need to be in lineups this week. Uh, Aaron Jones is a uh, is a running back one and A.J. Dillon is a running back two. Dillon actually still leads the team in, in carries, even though he's been quiet for a little bit here. He's been held out of the end zone since week one. I think that that could change this week, especially with the defensive front uh, injuries in New York. Green Bay Packers, or uh, Green Bay Packers, Pittsburgh Steelers at Buffalo Bills. This one is crazy. This spread, this is the largest spread on the week uh, per DraftKings Sportsbook. It's at uh, the Bills. The Bills are uh, minus 14 point favorites i think they were at minus 14.5 last night uh because i was writing this one up for uh pro football focus what to expect when you're expecting kenny pickett to start i think he's this one's interesting the the steelers offensive line is like not that great but they're they've been they've been very good at keeping their quarterbacks um away from pressure so I don't, I just kind of throw my hands up there. Um, Buffalo's pass rush is, I think, number one in terms of uh, number of four, four down linemen rushing, like zero blitzes, basically, or not ze- um, few blitzes. Um, <clears throat> so I think that they'll be able to get pressure on Pickett, but I think it's a surprisingly stronger trench matchup than we might have anticipated. The wide receiver, oh, oh, Kenny Pickett, you could bench stash him. He was distributing the ball well, but I don't think that he's going to be a guy that you need to start this week. Well, we can we can talk about, uh, man, maybe week seven against Miami. Um, as far as the wide receivers go, though, George Pickens is here. He has been his his route participation, his 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 ability to earn targets has started to become a problem for Deontay Harris. I have got these guys. I've got Pickens as the uh, I've got them both as wide receiver fours, and I see I need to make an edit there on the uh, wide receiver rankings page. But yeah, I have Pickett's one spot ahead of Johnson as wide receiver fours. The the Kenny Pickett George Pickens um, rapport from when they were in college together has carried over, so that's awesome. Uh, I think that Pickens needs to be on all redraft lineups, but this is just not really the week to start either guy because it is such a brutal matchup. Uh, but you know, when they're when a team's playing from behind like this, they might be able to to kind of parlay their way to something useful, especially in PPR format. So again, start him as wide receiver fours if you need to. Uh, I don't know if if you're if you're in a if you're in a very deep league, then that could be on the table. Chase Claypool is probably my, my biggest miss of the year. Uh, he is he's just he's a big bodied receiver and he can't win contested catches. Um, Pat Pat, Pat Fryermuth. You know, Buffalo's done a good job against tight ends. They still have the safety injuries, but I think that Jordan Poyer is going to play this week. And I'm double-checking their injury report. Firemuth is, like, he's a tight end one talent-wise, which surprises me because he's he's a little slow. But uh, Jordan Poyer. Okay, no, 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 no. He's got rib a ribs issue, which is different than what I recall. I thought he had a foot. Uh, but he was DNP, DNP. So uh, trending towards not playing. Yeah, Fryermuth actually could be, he could be in play here. Um, but I, the 
overall situation is not great, but I here's that you might not have a better option uh, at tight end. So I get it if you do need to start him, but just understand maybe you need to reduce expectations. Najee Harris isn't going to go anywhere. And, uh, I, you know, I, that was a guy who I really tried to advise people to not draft. He's a volume based play. Uh, he's not fast. And now he has to go up against the best defensive front in football. So yeah, Najee Harris, I have him ranked as the running back 28. <laughs> I get if you have to start him, but it's it's pretty dang brutal. On the Buffalo side of things, Josh Allen, quarterback one. Don't overthink it. Uh, Stephon Diggs. So Diggs and, and Gabe Davis have, have a big-time target upside. Um, Isaiah McKenzie and Jamison Crowder are probably out this week. Crowder, I think, broke his ankle, and McKenzie's dealing with a concussion. So Diggs, he's going to be a target monster, and uh, he, he severely outmatches both or all three of the Pittsburgh – cornerbacks so i think you can i think he's going to be chalky as as heck in dfs but i think that you can start him he's a wide receiver one this week gabe davis is like zero floor uh extremely high ceiling we i think we find out if he's good this week because it's, it's a good matchup game script might not be in his favor but player wise it's a good matchup and there shouldn't be a lot of target competition dawson knox I, he's you know he's banged up um i i don't expect anything from him oj howard and gpp sure um Excuse me. Oh my God. Uh, with, with a negative 14 or minus 14 uh, spread here, this is kind of the week to start Devin Singletary as a running back too. Now this team still throws a lot when they are winning, but if you got them, then you should start them because this is the, the reason that you drafted him. Miami Dolphins, New York Jets. Dolphins, I think you can start Teddy Bridgewater in two quarterback leagues, and I think that they'll be able to scheme the ball to the wide receivers. So I'm not, I'm not moving – uh waddle or hill really at all here they're just sort of in that maybe i need to uh readjust i i guess i've got i've i've got waddle as a uh wide receiver two high end wide receiver two and tyree kill is a uh mid-range wide receiver one might need to tinker with that a little bit but they're kind of part of this this um block of players where it's i mean do you do you want to make do you really need uh, me to rank Waddle ahead of AJ Brown and Devontae Adams? I don't think so. They're they're part of the same group of players, and and you know that you're going to start them. Don't worry about the wide receiver three. Don't worry about Mike Kosicki. The backfield Raheem Mostert's the uh, is the lead guy, and you can you can start either of these guys. I think is as running back fours on the Jets. Uh, Zach Wilson is a bench stash, if you please. I mean, you don't have to. It's it's not great. The the Miami defense is is really not great though. So you know, in two quarterback leagues, you could start Zach Wilson. <clears throat> Corey Davis continues to kind of show up in the box score, but his route participation is is trending downward. So I don't expect his usage to hold. Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore, the top two guys. I have them ranked as I've got Garrett Wilson as the wide receiver 33, Elijah Moore as the wide receiver 48, Corey Davis at 53. Tyler Conklin is a is a weekly start at tight end one this week. Uh Brees Hall, <clears throat> I I uh I've I've tried to link to my 33rd team stuff with Brees Hall uh as it pertains to nerd ball because I I labeled him as the number one buy low at the running back position. Um two or three weeks ago and he is like smashing he is running way more routes than michael carter is he last week had 17 carries breeze hall at some point this year is going to be we will just be ranking him as a running back one start him every week i think after the buy in week 10 for sure he will be a running back one uh i think it could be sooner than that though carter rb3 you know he's got he's got a decent floor Chicago Bears uh, at Minnesota Vikings. Um, don't worry about starting anybody on the uh, on the Bears in redraft. Just don't. And 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 you can start um, Darnell Mooney in GPP formats if you want to. But I'm not telling you to do that. Uh, as far as the Vikings go, um, the the problem with the Chicago Bears is not that their defense is good. It's that their offense runs so few plays that it limits the number of plays that their opponents can 
run. So Kirk Cousins is a quarterback two this week, despite a really good matchup. Justin Jefferson, he's a wide receiver one. Adam Thielen is a wide receiver three. Um, looking at Herb Smith. Yeah, I think that he is probably a tight end two. It's just, it's not great with the play volume. Dalvin Cook, I think, can have a bounce back week here against the Chicago Bears run defense, but it'll kind of have to be on efficiency, not not uh, volume. But that's not a problem for him because he's really good. Uh, Madison must bench stash. Dalvin Cook is a running back one. Uh, Titans at Commanders. Don't start Ryan Tannehill. Robert Woods is a wide receiver two against the commanders defensive backs. Uh, Kyle Phillips should be on redraft rosters and I have him ranked as a wide receiver for slot receiver. He's, he's had some, some uh, usage issues because of a shoulder injury and maybe part of that week two uh, punt return fumble, but I think it's more the shoulder than anything else. Um, Derek Henry is a fantasy running back one. Ignore the tight ends. Make sure you roster one of Dontrell Hilliard, Hassan Haskins, and Julius Chestnut. Uh, on the Washington side, Carson Wentz is really, really awful, and I know that he had some some fun performances. Now, the Tennessee Titans are very friendly to opposing wide receivers, so for that reason, I wrote up Terry McLaurin as a start at uh, four for four. You can go read about him there. Curtis Samuel is dealing with an injury he oh no he's sick yeah you could start him as a wide receiver three that's kind of it logan thomas he he's kind of a borderline tight end one tight end two antonio gibson i don't think that i have ranked in the uh top 36 i've got him as yeah as a running back 39 and mckissick as the uh running back 44 the titans front seven is not good but they are coached very well seattle seahawks at New Orleans Saints. I don't really trust the spread here. Uh, New Orleans opened as their neg- minus five and a half favorites, but the Seahawks defense has played really chippy. They're very good. Uh, they're playing really well. And the New Orleans Saints um, pass rush has been bad. Now their coverage has been good, uh, but Geno Smith, I think he's a high-end quarterback too, maybe even back-end quarterback one. You can start both. Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf in the top top 24. They are back end wide receiver twos. Ignore the rest of the wide receivers and tight ends. Rashad Penny can be started as... As a running back too, I would still be holding Kenneth Walker. I think he has tremendous upside. We talked actually, we touched on this last week. Penny saw an increase in routes run when Travis Homer went out. That's good. And I think that that usage held again last week on the new Orleans side of things. Unfortunately, Jameis Winston has not been practicing and neither has Michael Thomas. So I kind of think that Winston might not play, um, but After what we saw last week with Andy Dalton, I don't think that we need to be worried about Chris Olave. So what am I doing here? Andy Dalton is a quarterback to, I believe, just double checking there right now. Oh, I need to, I need to actually insert him in there because I've still got James Winston. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put, I'll put Dalton as a quarterback to probably around Teddy Bridgewater, Kirk Cousins in the, the mid tier. Um, the wide receivers. So I'm just I'm just all in on Chris Olave at this point. Uh, I think I had him as the wide receiver one in this class entering the year, and there were some cool long shot bets uh, that he was going to be a fantasy wide receiver or a wide receiver one. I think top fifteen. Uh, shout out to you, Jacob. Uh, was was more the reasonable play, but this week I'm just all in on him. The Seattle cornerbacks are bad. They're fast, but they're bad. So I've just Chris Olave, he's wide receiver one. Michael Thomas is not practicing, so it's just going to be the Chris Olave show again, and and Andy Dalton show that that they can get the job done. So, yeah, trust Olave. Get him in your lineup. Jarvis Landry is a wide receiver four with an ankle injury. The Seattle Seahawks are among the league's worst in covering tight ends. I wrote that up at the 33rd team this week. Go read that. I think that you can stream. Juwan Johnson is in, in like 14 or 16 team leagues, and he is a fine GPP play. Alvin Kamara is supposed to return. I have tentatively got him as a running back one, back end running back 
one. 49ers at Panthers. Uh, San Francisco opened as a big time favorite here, but their game total is set at something like 39 points. I think it's the lowest one on the week. Yeah, San Francisco at minus six and a half favorites. How does that uh, affect the team? Jimmy Garoppolo, low end or, or low ceiling quarterback two. Debo Samuel is a wide receiver one because he's a beast. Brandon Ayuk is a wide receiver four. Uh, Juwan Jennings, ignore him. Uh, George George Kittle, super big bummer here. I dropped him way down the ranks. Uh, left tackle Trent Williams is out, and they're having George Kittle block a lot. And with the low play volume, low game total, I have George Kittle ranked as back in tight end one. He's my tight end 11. Uh, oh, Jeff Wilson, I think, is going to kind of rock the house here. I do think that you still need to be rostering Jordan Mason as he's the next guy off the bench. But we are kind of starting to look at Elijah Mitchell coming back in week nine. Uh, Terry Davis Price might be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, but hey, things in fantasy can change on one play. Think of Deion Jackson. Jeff Wilson is old. He, I think he's 28 or 29. Um, I'll just look that up. Oh, shit, he's only 26. Wow, he has been playing for a while. Um, yeah, so Jeff Wilson, he's the guy that Shanahan uh, trusts. He has been, he is a fifth-year veteran, had some injuries, uh, but they like him. So anyway, Jeff Wilson, he's going to be a uh, running back two this week, and I think that he, I think he can, he can kind of just rack up the carries here, but roster Jordan Mason, Panthers, uh, DJ Moore is, I'm, I'm just, I'm only touching on the relevant people here because this Matt rules an idiot and Baker Mayfield sucks. So DJ Moore is a wide receiver four and Christian McCaffrey is a running back one Eagles at Cardinals, Jalen hurts wide receiver one, or excuse me, uh, <laughs> quarterback one, AJ Brown. I have him as the, uh, wide receiver 11 Devonte Smith is the wide receiver 28, but he, Actually, I, might, I actually might push him up a little bit. Uh, very good matchup. The Arizona cornerbacks are really bad. Steve Kime cannot draft cornerbacks. So I might push him up into the mid-tier wide receiver two area. I like Devontae Smith quite a lot. Dallas Goddard he should rock the house. Isaiah Simmons cannot cover. They also sometimes put Byron Murphy on, on tight ends. Uh, I have... Goddard as the tight end four. And I think Pete wrote him up as a highly consistent start this week. I think he was a feature piece in our featured player in Pete's. Um, is it, I think it was his roasting ghost. Uh, go look at it. It's on Twitter. Miles Sanders. He is. It's interesting. There's some, I kind of think fluky stuff going on here, but it's also like he's, he's a good rusher and, and he's in a great offense. So just don't overthink it. He's a high end running back too. As far as the other running backs go, I'll just I'll I will double check what the injury report has for us today. Boston Scott, LP, LP. So he's going to come back into the fold. I think you can roster Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott, and Trey Sermon. Sermon got on the field, um, and it, we it, it's just you know it's ambiguous behind Sanders. So just roster all of these guys. I don't think that you need to start anybody other than Sanders, but uh, maybe Gainwell. Um, yeah, Arizona Cardinals side of things. Uh, Kyler Murray is still a quarterback one. Marquise Brown is a. This is a buy low on Kyler. Just so you guys know, uh, DeAndre Hopkins is back in week seven, and Kyler has has played pretty dang well without his number one wide receiver, despite Cliff Kingsbury just going to town on doorknobs. Uh, uh, Marquise Brown is wide receiver 18 for me this week. Rondale Moore, you cannot trust him. Cliff Kingsbury's a like colossal idiot. He's got, last week he had Rondale Moore running routes on the perimeter. And um, God, where did I write this up? I think I wrote him up at four for four. So go look this up there. But basically they had the guy lined up on the perimeter a ton. They had his average depth of target at like 10. Last year was 1.8. It doesn't need to be 1.8 because that's not even really wide receiver. He's kind of a Debo Sam. He's like a five foot six, you know, 190, five foot eight, 190 uh, Debo Samuel. He needs to be used that way. He needs to be in the slot. He needs to be weaving through traffic, uh, not trying to win on the perimeter against 
big number one corners. It's stupid. Cliff's stupid. You, you all you can do is is bench bench stash uh, Rondell Moore or start him if you need like a long touchdown to to win. Like if that's your only means of of succeeding, then you know put him in there. But it's pretty rough outside of that. Zach Ertz tight end one. James Connor. Um, you know, I he was a guy that I tried to warn everybody not to dabble with. I just don't really love the situation for him. Um, Philadelphia's defensive front, they encourage people to run, but it's also like Jordan Davis is, you know, 10 feet tall and 400 pounds. Um, it's a tough group to run on. So uh, James Conner, I think, what, what do I have? Yeah, uh, running back 27. I think you should stash Eno Benjamin. Dallas Cowboys at Los Angeles Rams. Cooper Rush, quarterback two. He's moving the chains. Uh, CD Lamb, I think that on talent and volume, you can keep him in the uh, 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 I've got him wide receiver 13. He's the thing is, he's going to play a lot of uh, Jalen Ramsey this week. That's kind of tough, but like, you know, defenses to some degree don't actually matter. Uh, to some degree, they do. Don't or do at me. That's fine. I like to uh, talk to my listeners. Uh, Michael Gallup has a really nice matchup here on the perimeter. So I think that Gallup, um, he showed very well. I've got him as a wide receiver four behind DJ Moore. I actually think I'll probably move him ahead of DJ Moore, Deontay, George Pickens. I I might try to force him into the wide receiver three range. Don't worry about Noah Brown. Dalton Schultz, do not start. Um, Ezekiel Elliott, what to do with these running backs? Trade him if you can. Uh, I've got Zeke as a running back three, and I have Tony Pollard as a running back four. Cincinnati Bengals uh, at Baltimore Ravens. Oh, this one's going to be awesome. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens defense is very bad. Their secondary on paper is great, but they have had a lot of issues uh, getting guys in position in the secondary. Uh, they've suffer suffered some injuries in the front seven. Teams are just cooking them. So uh, Joe Burrow should be probably ranked even higher than I have him. Actually, no, I've got Joe Burrow as the quarterback five. I have Jamar Chase as the wide receiver three overall, and I have T, T. Higgins as the wide receiver four overall. Why? Well, I tweeted about this earlier. Uh, there's a great conversation that Dan Orlovsky had with some other players on whatever, some sports channel. Mina Kimes chimed in, and I really liked what Mina had to say. She was tracking their um, – uh, do, 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 shotgun usage versus under center. And, and what the players were doing was they were talking about how much more difficult it is to figure out what a team is doing when they are under center rather than shotgun. The reason being is that there are just more looks. There are more things you can do uh, when under center and it confuses the defense. It's, it's more difficult to diagnose running back. The running back itself. I talked about this before uh, when Mina did her show in Seattle, she brought on KJ Wright and she asked him, which makes it harder to diagnose the play, the personnel grouping or the running back that's on the field. And KJ paused for a second, and then he went, I would say definitely the personnel, not the running back. So keep that in mind. There's, you know, I know we're talking about formation here, but it's 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 worth noting because a lot of the time that the Bengals are in uh, shotgun, they're in empty. They don't have a running back. But anyway, point is this. Um, <laughs> when they do have a running back out there, there's obviously a difference in shotgun and under center. Uh, Offenses are a little bit more effective when they're under center because it's more difficult to, to diagnose the play. We like that a lot. Uh, the, their usage has gone up every game. I think she said in week one, it was like 3% under center on first down. I guess what it was. Go watch the clip. It's on my timeline. Uh, but I think it's it's now, it moved up to like, it's moved up every week and now it's at like 26% of the time. Uh, that's great. And that's how you get, when you start to confuse the defenses, that's how you start to get these shot plays uh, to Jamar Chase. Uh, Hayden Winks was tweeting out some images of the way defenses are covering Chase, where they're basically the safety is always on Chase's out of the field at some point. The way T Higgins is playing because he's a baller, um, defenses are going to have to start just just paying attention to T Higgins as well. So um, start both of these guys; they're elite wide receiver ones. And I think that I have Tyler Boyd as maybe you need to move him up. Their slot coverage it's difficult because they've had their two best slot or two best cornerbacks per, on the perimeter moving into the slot because they don't know what to do there. Uh, so Boyd might just kind of get left out to dry, but I think he's a good GPP play. I've got him as like a wide receiver four though in, um, in redraft. 
Hayden Hurst, he's a volume play, and I think it's totally fine. Uh, the safeties are theoretically good in Baltimore, but you know we're we're just looking for anything to grasp at at the tight end position. So go ahead and start him. Joe Mixon, just based on volume, is a top five running back. They're not throwing him the ball enough. Um, ben Gretsch and uh, Sean Siegel have done some. They they had a good conversation this week on stealing signals about Joe Mixon's usage. He's getting a lot of high value touches. That's passing game looks and uh, 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 green zone looks or, or goal line looks. He's had like seven goal line attempts because they just kept giving him the ball in the goal line and he couldn't convert. Anyway, go let's do it because they're brilliant and it's a really good conversation. Uh, Joe Mixon is a top five running back on the week. Lamar Jackson is a top five quarterback on the week. Rashad Bateman dealing with a foot sprain. What does that mean? I heard Evan Silva talking about this on their podcast this week, and he reminded uh, fine listeners that foot sprains can sometimes be Liz Frank. They can they, so so that's a big old red flag. It's only being referred to as a foot, but he went DNP and DNP, which means Devin Duvernay is going to be the number one wide receiver in the Baltimore Ravens offense. He is, as we talked about this with Jax Falcone, eighty percent Debo Samuel is his ceiling. He could start to hit that with Rashad Bateman out. So you need to be starting Devin DuVernay as a wide receiver three at worst. Let me go look where I have him now and make sure that I'm not lying to you guys. Uh, yeah, I do. Woo-hoo, look at me. I've got him as a wide receiver 29 on the week. James Prochet, maybe I, I wouldn't be looking at the other wide receivers all that seriously. Um, Mark Andrews deserves to be the tight end one, but I think I've got him as tight end two. Yeah, behind Kelsey. Hey, can't blame me. Um, oh, actually, well, go look at uh, Kelsey's history versus Las Vegas. It's fun. But hey, so is Mark Andrews against Cincinnati. You're starting both these guys because they're amazing. Running backs, J.K. Dobbins, really cool stuff last week. They gave him a lot of carries, uh, and they gave they got him involved in the passing game, which we haven't really seen before. So I'm really happy for J.K. That's great. He is my running back 20 on the week, and you don't need to worry about any of the other running backs behind him. Last game for you guys, Las Vegas Raiders at uh, 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 Cincinnati. No, uh, Las Vegas Raiders at Kansas City Chiefs. What do you make of this Raiders offense? I think that we... Um, Derek Carr is not playing that great. Some of it might just be that they are adjusting to, he's adjusting to Josh McDaniels, but I think this game can shoot out. These guys have a good long history. I think I might've put Derek Carr in um, my start sit column at four for four. Um, I think there might be a, a series of stats in there about his past performances. These teams have played each other a lot and they, they, um, Go look up, yeah. Go look at, at four for four, and then if, if it's not in there, um, just look up his previous performances against Kansas City to kind of give you an idea of what to expect. He's usually pretty efficient, and I think he's had a, I think he's or the last four games. I think he's had two, three touchdown games. But but go go double check me on that. Um, anyway, I think that that Derek Carr is a. Let me see where I've got him ranked. Actually, yeah, I've got him as a quarterback ten. I know he's been a little tough to trust, but I think this is an okay one for him. Uh, Devonta Adams is a wide receiver one. Hunter, Hunter Renfro is supposed to be back, but I think I'm going to tentatively have him, have him kind of on that wide receiver three slash four borderline. He has had some good showings against Kansas City, but Kansas City's defense is, is pretty dang good. They've got slot, good slot coverage. I think that's Jarius Sneed in there. Uh, tight end Darren Waller. He's been tough to trust, but again, you know, these – these two teams are so familiar with each other. Darren Waller's been a baller for so long. So I've got him as the tight end six on the week. The running backs are as follows. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, running back 13. He's getting uh uh he's getting used in the right way. It's not voluminously, but it is efficiently. And we will take that, especially against a paltry defense like the Las Vegas Raiders. So CEH, Clyde Edwards Hilaire running back 13, Isaiah Pacheco, running back 36, Jarek McKinnon, running back 56. Now, McKinnon might be an overreaction because he he really stunk it up in the box score, but I, I did, I have since learned that he basically, had, I, I think he was missed on two touchdown passes. So we don't have this conversation if, if, McKinnon does get in, if McKinnon does get in there, but Pacheco's overall usage is increasing, it's improving. And I think that he is starting to be more involved Um in the in the uh, in the receiving game and i'm just going to double check that here as we're we're as we're on the horn um again it's an ambiguous ambiguous backfield which is something that we always want to be chasing it is a high scoring offense which is another thing that we always want to be chasing 
Uh, and Pacheco, uh, you know, he he's like he's he's got he's he's got the juice. He's he's a he's a, a solid, a sturdy bodied guy, and um, and he runs a friggin' four three. You know, and and he he like it's more than just the athletic traits. It's like the guy was a good uh, running back. Okay, actually, I'm so I have to correct the record. He was not. He has not had uh, really an increase in in route participation. I get he. They're just getting him on the field more overall as as a ball carrier. And and if they can get him more into pass protection, and uh, I know they don't. The Kansas City doesn't really do a whole lot of uh, pass pro stuff with their running backs. They mostly have him run out anyway. Pacheco needs to be rostered in all leagues. If he if he is available, you need to have him on your roster right now. I don't think you need to um, force him into your lineup, but like I said, I have him as the RB thirty six. Um, he has had I believe, and I know I need to move on here, gang. But uh, I think he's he's been getting work in scoring position just a little bit. Yeah, he has. He's he's when they're getting in, um, when they're getting in the red zone, Pacheco has begun to to have a role here. So he he needs he really, really needs to be rostered. Um Jerick McKinnon, you can still start him in PPR formats, I think. Um, but you know, it's a little shaky outside of that. Uh, I will probably be starting him in at least one of my leagues, but it's I, his his um his ceiling is not quite as high as it was on a weekly basis. In week one. Now, that said, were CEH or Pacheco to suffer an injury or miss time, you know, uh, maybe they quit. Uh, the McKinnon is like soundly back in the RB3 conversation. So all of these running backs need to be on rosters. I just covered the Kansas City Chiefs backfield uh, instead of Las Vegas. Josh Jacobs uh, is starting to get dual threat usage. He had a huge route run. Uh, right last week the las vegas coaching staff is trusting him and i I think that we should be buying into it this was always his skill set but coaches just didn't want to use it use him that way and he kind of didn't want to be used that way he always talked about how he wanted somebody else back there so he wasn't sacrificing his body well they're doing it now and he's playing really really good so uh, go ahead and and trust josh jacobs i think that you can buy maybe even still a little bit low on him. I, and I would, I would try to go do it. Uh, I have Josh Jacobs as the running back nine. It's, it might be the highest I've ever ranked. Actually week one of last year, I think I might've had him maybe higher. Um, I think they were playing the Panthers anyway. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't worry about the other running backs. Just, just go uh, fire up Josh Jacobs, Patrick Mahomes. He's a quarterback one. Uh, he actually, maybe it was him who had the multi three touchdown games against uh, uh, Las Vegas. Like I said, go, go check me on Derek Carr, but it, I think it's a, a good game. Um, Patrick Mahomes, he's the best quarterback of all time and he will torch this team. He's a top three fantasy football quarterback, even though he doesn't run the ball that much, does not have the rushing upside of uh, Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson, or maybe even Josh Allen. As far as the wide receivers go, you have to go add Sky Moore. If you were listening to this, you have to go add Sky Moore. Stop what you're doing. Go add Sky Moore. Um, I wrote him up in a number of places this week for free. You can find my work on him at the 33rd team. He was being used as a, a wide receiver and a, a returner early in the season. Since week one, his routes are going up. His targets are going up. And uh, I, like, I think he goose egged for, for weeks two and three. I can pull this up, uh, but, but here, here's what we like to see his, his receiving usage is increasing and his uh, return usage is decreasing. Yeah. He had one target in week one, then zero, zero, and then four last week. And anyway, last week's route participation was the highest that it's been all year. We, they need an X receiver in this offense. Juju Smith-Schuster, he's a fine slot receiver at this point. He's going to fall short of my expectations. Uh, Marcus Valdez-Scantling is not going to fall short of my expectations because my expectations were like as low as they could possibly be. Mark, uh, Marcus Valdez-Scantling and Mikael Hardman will continue just doing the same thing, stretching the field. Juju will keep eating it up in the short area. He probably doesn't have very many blow-up games in him. This one could be one against um, the Raiders secondary is kind of so-so, and they've been moving their guy, their like, uh, 
uh, Amik Robertson sucks. He's their slot corner. They did have Nate Hobbs in the in the slot corner, uh, and he's good. But now he's on the perimeter, so Juju Smith Juju Smith Schuster should be able to get some stuff done there. They were playing Sky Moore all over the the formation. Actually, I think he had a plurality of his routes were from the slot, but they're they're playing him all, all over the place. So Juju, um, where do I have these guys ranked? Juju, wide receiver thirty six. Sky Moore, wide receiver 58, and and MVS 57. I'm going to move Sky up. I think... I think the Sky Moore is a really shaky start. I don't think you can start him in redraft. I think that you should start Sky Moore in some large field DFS tournaments. I think that this could be his breakout week. It also could not. He has a long way to go. Like his usage is not on the same, his route participation rate is not on the same level as the other three receivers. But this dude, he was a baller in college. He has good draft capital. Um, he ran his route profile. I think this is Ben Gretsch that I heard talk about this. His route tree was of all of the, of the early receivers taken was most similar to what X receivers in the NFL run. Like his the Sky Moore's profile is the perfect rookie wide receiver profile. And so it, it just takes guys, especially I think he was a small school guy. I think it was like Nevada. Um, it can just take guys a little bit to to get on the field. But like S- Sky Moore, I'm gonna move on after saying this. Sky Moore's ceiling in 2022 is and every week wide receiver two at some point. It, it, that might not be this week, but this guy in this offense, he can become the wide receiver two in Kansas City. They have a buy in week eight. I think that Sky Moore could be the number two option by week nine, which means you need to have him on your roster now. And if he does take that role, they start, they come out of their buy against Tennessee. I think they're the league's second worst fantasy defense against wide receivers a blow up spot jacksonville they're okay in the secondary la chargers without jc jackson they're vulnerable los angeles rams they've got they've got um jalen ramsey but darian kendrick on the perimeter is not good um yeah sky Moore, his ceiling is like eruption level high okay uh travis kelsey he's a fantasy football tight end one. Oh, we already covered the backfield so we're moving on oh we're, uh did i tell you guys where juju is yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah he's he wide receiver 36 um cool all right thank you all so much for tuning in i'm sorry that i've got i've got a rush here but i actually have a flight that i have to get to um hit me up on twitter at nick n-i-c bot afford b-o-d-i-f-o-r-d n-f-l at nick bot afford, n-f-l hit us up at nerdball ff on twitter follow us on instagram and wherever else pete has us youtube etc all right thanks for tuning in you guys really appreciate it uh hit me up with any comments you have peace